Enoch. Remember in, in Genesis 3.15, the Bible says, God said to Satan in Genesis 3.15, I will put an enmity between you and the woman. Amen. That's what he said. Yeah. In Genesis 3.15 he says, I will put an enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his head. Yes, sir. In the beginning, God made it, made it, he said that the children of light and the children of the different seeds, it was going to be no mutual agreement between Satan's seed and God's seed. Wherefore he slew him. John's question goes to, to the motivation act, motivated act. It appears that Cain's jealousy over God's approval of Abel's sacrifice was the roots of this deed. Marvel not, brother, if the world hated you. Well. Marvel not. Don't be surprised if the world hates you. If you get along good with the world, something is wrong. Because light and darkness. It's different in, in, in the first John, uh, John writes in first John, first chapter about the difference between light and darkness. Light is 100% perfect. Light and darkness cannot coexist. Coexist. Sin and righteousness cannot coexist. There's definitely imposed hostility between good and evil. In the garden of Eden, what Satan said, God placed animosity between the two sides. And he wants his people to expect opposition to those on the devil side. Cain is an enduring example of the natural antagonism between good and evil. evil. Any tolerance of harmony between light and darkness confuses both saints and sinners. It definitely blurs God's thing. Love. Signifies, signifies a passing from death to life. In verse John, the 13th chapter, verses 14 and 15. 10. First John, the third chapter. 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 The he who does not love his brother abides in death. How, who, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life by his brother. Amen. Amen. We know that we have passed out of death into life. We have passed. Think about passing. When you pass something, you've gone past death. Yes. We have passed out of death into life because we what? Love the brother. That's it. Our love is what gets us past the love of Christ. Gets us past death into life. Even if the world hates the Christians, we know that our relationship with God is genuine. John's repetition, repetition is in fact in murder. In, in, in murder. He says, hereby, this is why we know. Hereby, we know what? That we have passed. The word past means step out and over. Speaks of the transition from spiritual death into life. To pass from death to life. John discusses the evidence that translation has taken place because we love the brother. Because we love the brother. In first John. 5 and 24. I'm sorry, he did the first in John 5, John 5, 24. He says, He has passed, has man has eternal life and come up not into judgment, but has passed out of death in the life. John 5, 24. Paul discusses the same event when the Father delivered us out of the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Whatsoever, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Yeah. And so, he, no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Cain is born again into the picture to establish hate, not 
only destroys the life of others, it destroys the possibility of eternal life. He furthermore came that he must rule over. Jesus God, God told Cain that he must rule over his anger. Otherwise, his anger will rule over him. And unto thee shall be his desire. In Genesis 4 and 7. Jesus insisted that the motive behind sinful actions brings the same degree of guilt as does the sinful act itself. Matthew 5, 22 and 23. The sin, hurt, the sin hurts those sinned against, but the motive hurts the one committing the sin. Y'all hear that? The sin hurts those sinned against, well, but the motive of your sin is what is hurts the one committing the sin. You know, when he says you know, it states an axiom, axiom, axiomatic that fellowship with God cannot arise from base of evil sentiments towards others. Amen. Amen. The definition of brotherly love. The definition of brotherly love. John, 1 John 3, 16 through 18. 1 John 3, 16 through 18. I think I gave that brother work. I got it though. Hereby proceed we, the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. But whoso hath this world's good, and see if his brother's need hath need, and shut up up his bowels of compassion for him, how dwell the love of God in him. Jesus exemplifies what it means to love the brother. Jesus exemplifies what it means to love the brother. The word for love, agape, has been used, been described as active goodwill. In giving his life for our sins, Jesus demonstrated goodwill in an active way. By meditating upon his example, we are taught, taught of God to love one another. In John, in, in verse 16, John says, 13 times hereby, hereby, in verse 16 says, in, I'm sorry, in 13 times in first in John, the epistle of John, he says, hereby, in this, to give his readers evidence about the things we know to be true. In first John, the fifth chapter, it says, we can know by the things that are written that we are saved. We can know by the things that are written that we are saved. He laid down, Jesus laid down his life for us. Explains what love is all about. For the word Cooper, for, makes his laid, laid down his life a precarious substitutional act. He laid down his life. He makes the voluntary act. I lay down my life, you see, that I may take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. It was motivated by love. For greater love hath no man than this, that a man that lay down his life Amen. for his friends. Amen. In a class that was poor, this episode was explained that occurred in the life of a soldier. He and, him, he and some of his fellow student soldiers were under heavy enemy fire. They hastily dug a hole in which to bury themselves. When an unpinned enemy hand grenade was thrown into the bunk, well, one of the soldiers voluntarily yeah. covered the grenade with his back, just as it exploded. Thus he saved the lives of his colleagues in arms at the cost of his own. When asked how he felt about the sacrifice of his buddy, the surviving soldier replied, how should I feel? There I was alive, covered with his blood, without any attempt to diminish the virtue of that event. It must be remembered that Jesus' sacrifice separates itself from that battlefield experience in several significant ways. Only if the same soldier had fallen into the grenade that menaced a group of enemy soldiers, would his act 